I was like, hey, he's here. I can go find him. <laughs> Florida man is a lesson on punctuation. Florida man is a crime show or a comedy or a drama. Florida man is one of the most confusing shows I've ever seen coming out of Florida. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Falling Towers. Watch the first podcast, the podcast in which we watch the first episode of a series so that you don't have to. You guessed it today. Okay. You can. We are doing Florida Man on Netflix, the brand new show. Well, why is it a brand new show? Why are we doing it? Because this month is all about brand new shows. So if you have a suggestion of a show you'd like us to do and it's new, let us know in the comments below and we will review it. Maybe. All right. Uh, everybody, you know the co-captain here, Dr. Muhammad Noor. Hello. Always a pleasure Ooh. to be on Falling Towers. Watch the first of things. Rico E. Anderson is also here, actor. Hello. It's great to be back to Falling Towers. Watch the first of things. My name is Ryan T. Husk. I'm wearing a cool House of a Thousand Corpses shirt, everybody. I think uh, my good buddy Darth Shuey got me that because he knows it's like one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah. Shout out to Darth got, Shuey. I bet Darth would have liked Longo, this show. Uh, Walking Art Made by Melissa, introverted, not now on the introvertedrepublic.com shirt. <laughs> and I'm wearing a shirt. And I'm wearing a Henley shirt that has no, nothing on it. And I knew I, somebody I named Henley before. Don Henley? <laughs> very Pretty nice sure that's where the shirt's made from some dude named henley i don't know this was a lady uh all right everybody here it comes let's talk about this show everybody first things first most important thing is please make sure you like this video you give it a five-star rating if you're listening in uh <laughs> Mom's doing <laughs> special effects for us like, that's our special effects budget everybody uh and make your suggestions in the comments below. Leave us a review. And please be sure to subscribe to this channel so we can make more goodies for you. Uh, yes. Where should we go from here, uh, Mohammed? Mm, I think we're in a predicament of what to do. So we should predict what each other uh, thought of this show before we hear the summaries. What do you call this type of prediction, Mohammed Noor? We call it the predicament. It's like, it's like an Altoid, but better. <laughs> wow. Is it more intense than an Altoid? It's, it is. There's so much drama. Like, oh, did Ryan give this a five or a nine? Or <laughs> You know what I just I like realized? Altoid. An, Al an Altoid sounds like maybe the back of your shoulder. Oh, yeah, it does sound like it. Kind of like Deltoid. Right? Like a yeah, Deltoid, Altoid. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Or like a mold growing on you that you need to have removed. Ooh. <laughs> yep. So anyway, uh, this <laughs> is my favorite part of the show. I'm so excited when Muhammad describes it. I get all like uppity. Um, so we've known each other for, I've known Rico for 10 years this coming October. That is nuts. It is. Uh, Muhammad yeah, less, but I know him well. And Muhammad, I predict, four years. I predict that you will be medium plus on this show i think you're going to be medium plus like right at medium but a little bump up, little bump up. yeah rico i think you're going to be medium minus on it because <laughs> you gave us a little hint when you said it was very confusing if it's one thing people don't like when they're watching something is to be confused because you can't really enjoy something unless if you're confused unless you're like wanting to be confused on purpose. But anyway, those are my predictions. What about you, Muhammad? Any predictions on your part? I do have some predictions. Ryan, I think you're going to have a very mixed view on it, <laughs> like in the sense that I think there's going to be aspects that you that you liked. I think you're going to appreciate that it was a clear setup. You're going to appreciate there was something at the end to draw you to come back. However, I think you're going to think the middle was a bit of a mess. <laughs> so I think you're, in the end, you may come down medium minus as you were saying for rico rico i'm just gonna go with medium rather than medium minus i think i think you wouldn't have been quite as i think you're gonna think parts of it were confusing but that you still enjoyed the ride you know you're, you're a pretty happy guy you know you're just like i'm going along with this even if it's a little chaotic it's, it's okay <laughs> mm. 
Yeah. What do you Doctor, think, Rico? Are you really a happy guy? I don't think so. Well, you know, I have my moments. I, I'm going to I'm gonna partially agree with the good doctor here in terms of Ryan, you being a little medium to minus, but I'm, I'm going to take down some of that medium. I'm going to make it more of a minus for Ryan. Ooh. Yeah. Um, in terms of his like and or dislike of the show. Dr. Muhammad Noor, I believe that you were more in that medium minus category. But I, I see you as liking a little bit more of the medium portion of it than the minus portion of it. Did we just create like a whole new part yeah, of this? Yeah, it was like meaty. Minus and, it was <laughs> meaty. Um, meaty minus. So get it, meaty. Um. Yeah, we went. We really just floated right around. It's like medium was the picnic, and we were the fly. You know, we just like didn't yeah. quite leave medium. We just stayed there. Uh, so nobody, everybody, nobody predicted anybody like just solidly plus. <laughs> nobody predicted, yeah, or nobody medium predicted well it. or medium rare. Mm -mm. Right, right, right. <laughs> so everybody at home, uh, feel free to create your own way of describing how we liked it. Uh, if you want to stick with steaks and burgers. Feel free. Uh, do you Impossible think I burgers. liked? Yeah. Do you think I liked this first episode of Florida Man? Do you think Dr. Muhammad Noor enjoyed, or, or as Rico calls him, the good doctor? And uh, do you think Rico is a happy person or not? And also, did he like this show or not? And tell us why. <laughs> and uh, feel free to use your own ranking system. You could even use size of bass. You could be like, he's a 13 inch bass. Uh -huh. a, I think you said large mouth versus small mouth or something like that. I don't know anything about bass. Ryan, I just know that it's spelled the same as base. So there's all, you've, you've created a lot of confusion in all these polls, these inner polls that you want people to have. But here we are. So The go. only polls I like are east of Germany. All right, here it comes, <laughs> everybody. Thanks, Muhammad. Geography joke. Yeah. Like all that. right. <laughs> We got to move on, everybody. I know you want us to keep making dumb jokes about dumb things, but we must move on. Oh, well, you're um, making the dumb jokes, but so why? While, while you're putting stuff into into the chat, I'll I'll tell you what this show is even a boot. Perfect. <laughs> <That's> cool, <right? laughs> Thank you. Type oh. away feverishly, everybody. Hit it, Muhammad. <laughs> so Mike Valentine is a Philadelphia ex-cop with gambling debt. He ends up working for a gangster to get his debts paid, but also kind of falls in love with the gangster's girlfriend, Deli. Deli ends up running away to Florida, where Mike is actually from, and the gangster assigns Mike to go retrieve her. Awkward. Amidst various family reunions, reminiscing about gold coins and a shark attack, Mike finds Deli murdered. Mike is traumatized and investigates, and the police begin to think that maybe Mike is the killer. In a surprise twist at the end, Mike comes back to his hotel room to find Delhi still alive. Da, da, da. Wow, you guys. Wow. Very good, Mom. All right, so everybody, now that you know what this show is even a boot, finish up on telling us whether you think I, Muhammad, and Rico liked it. And we're going to hit our next segment entitled Expectations. You said hit it. <laughs> We're going to first talk about what you expect. We'll spend a little bit of time on that. This is what we expected before we saw the show. And the more time I want you, get you in what you actually oh. got. <laughs> Come on, man. There we go. Ali. Don't you like me? I do like you. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> first name, Muhammad. Last name, Ali. All right. Here it comes, everybody. So let's compare and contrast what we expected versus what we got. Muhammad. Before you watch this first episode of Florida Man, brand new show on Netflix, what did you expect, if anything? I'd never heard of it. I'll say that right off the bat. I already got your text. I was like, Florida Man? Okay. But the only thing that jumped to mind is there's so many memes, so, so many Star Trek memes out there with Trip Tucker, and it has like hashtag YOLO, hashtag Florida Man, <laughs> things yeah. like that. So I guess something along the lines of that though i don't even know what that would mean in terms of like a whole series that obviously would not have Connor trainer in it or maybe it would <laughs> but yeah I, I came in with no expectations whatsoever i didn't even know whether it's gonna be comedy drama crime whatever yeah i didn't know what about you rico what did you expect if anything yeah muhammad i'm with you man because i did and it, it, it wasn't so much the trip tucker thing but it was you know you, you see these you know the the 
like it's almost become a, a a joke in itself when you see headlines: Florida man loses arm in bicycle accident as he falls in the river and gets eaten by a <laughs> turtle. You know, it's just like things like that. <laughs> turtle, and, right? So my friend and I had never heard of Florida man either. The funny thing about Netflix, Netflix, it got so many shows and. Sometimes when you hear about it, they're in the third and fourth season. And I'm like, I never even knew this show existed, much less I didn't audition for it. What the hell? <laughs> so, but yeah, I expected, I, I didn't really know what to expect just hearing it, but I but I did assume it may be a riff on those type of headlines. And I thought, I mean, clearly it's going to take place in Florida and maybe it's some sort of man. <laughs> it, it could be a comedy. I mean, just based on memes and stuff. So I expected I expected either something funny or something um, mysterious and 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 brainy. Something that's going to make me stop and go, ooh, ah. It would be surprising to have a brainy show called Florida Man, but maybe. <laughs> yeah, brainy Smurf. Well. I'll tell y'all what I expected. Uh, full disclosure, I've already seen the first two seasons of this show. Just kidding, Whoa, it's brand new. Seasons. Whoa. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was just <laughs> riffing off Rico saying, you find out about something, it's, it's there in their third season. But um, I'm very similar to you, Muhammad, almost identical to Rico in that I didn't know anything about it. Uh, Netflix puts on a little promo for it. Florida man immediately evokes the thoughts of the meme. So I thought it was going to be funny uh, or at least, you know, it's a clever title to get us to think that it's funny or, you know, something, but that's really it. That's really it. The other thing I knew about it was that it was like 50 something minutes for the first episode. Cause we always check that if it's a two hour first episode, we're like, sorry, bro, we ain't watching ya sorry but what about if nope <laughs> how about if we no all right. all right that's about that's truly it um and we knew it was brand new muhammad yeah, that's true that's what we expected pretty much nothing what did we actually get more than nothing i hope more than nothing i'll grant that much <laughs> so, um <laughs> I was mixed. You know, you guys were right in that sense. Um, so one of the things I liked, so there was a lot of exposition in the show, right? I mean, you know, right off the bat, we're immediately introduced to this guy who's working for the gangster and he's got the debt. Oh, he's got this crush on Delhi. Okay. Uh, I actually assumed at the beginning that they were in Florida. I didn't know where they were. Apparently it was Philadelphia, but that didn't, that didn't, that wasn't clear until significant areas. Like you have to go to Florida. Like, oh, I guess they're not in Florida. <laughs> um the exposition was was pretty good. I like the twist at the end. It's like, oh, because I remember even thinking when Delhi was lying there with all the blood, like, you know, is she actually dead? But, you know, <laughs> I assumed from the blood that he like poked at her and she was cold, but I guess not. Um, felt her wrist. We'll talk. That's about true. That. Yeah, maybe he just didn't even think of the fact like, oh, she's completely warm. Maybe she just died. And that's why she's, I don't know. <laughs> um, there are a lot of things. There are a lot of moments in the show where I got a little bored, I have to admit. I mean, as as I saw a couple of funny scenes, I was like, oh, this is going to be a comedy. Like, eh, there wasn't enough comedy to sustain me in it. And there were, the, I mean, some of the reminiscences there, as you were saying, back and dreaming back about days gone by with Delhi. I was like, eh, you know, I'm not that wedded to Delhi yet, even though, you know, she's obviously attractive, but I'm not wedded to her. I'm just dying to see more, more of him just reminiscing about her. There were a lot of times where I had to pause and replay things because I didn't quite catch it. So like the, like the, um, the news story about the ambulance. There was a lot in there, and I had to pause and replay that like twice to catch. Like, wait, what? So, what actually happened there? So, I found that little. I, I figured it out after I replayed it twice. Maybe I was just tired. I don't know. But I, I guess I didn't love it, but I, I didn't hate it. It was, it was, it was middle of the pack. I mean, I have a lot of specific comments we can go into more detail, but that's that's sort of what I got. I still and like the comment I said at the very beginning. It's unclear to me exactly what. Is this supposed to be a comedy? I mean, because it wasn't that funny. I mean, there were little moments of funny. Is it supposed to be a drama? It wasn't that dramatic. Is there crime? Well, there wasn't much crime. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. yeah, I didn't know what hmm. to take. I didn't know what to walk away with in that sense from it, aside from just a, like, there's a plot here involving Delhi trying to run away. 
So Muhammad says middle of the pack. Rico, where in the pack would you put this? I was confused. I I was also bored in the middle. The beginning had a, a, a decent start to it. We we got an idea of who this person was pretty much within the first, I guess, what five minutes of the show of, of, mm -hmm. of the opening, and so that 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 kicked it off. That teed off what we had an idea that we were going to be getting ourselves into, and then for myself, it just kind of it just kind of floated and didn't really have the umph that that little bitty part of the beginning had i kind of felt like the relationship between those two was was too quick um i i felt like it didn't it it just all of a sudden bam happened and but i didn't see any hints of it in the beginning of that being a possibility um I will say though, they got me at the end. They got me at the end. Um, and and they got me in the middle too, being in the sense that we find out that, you know, she's she's gone. And I was like, I I, I thought, I thought it. I, I never thought once that, oh, well, maybe is she dead? I I mean, they clearly set it up that way, where she is supposed to be dead. And I bought it. So all right. Time to go. find out if I'm buying or selling. What are you so um, I think overall it was good. Uh, the, the things that it did best by far to me was the uh, one liners of dialogue. Yeah. Uh, I thought those were very, very good. Some were funny, some were clever, but mostly they were bits of exposition snuck in uh, in a in a well written line, and I've got a lot of examples there. Uh, so that was really good. I thought basically the one the the singular lines of dialogue were by far the best thing on on the show, and whoever wrote that gets major kudos because I thought those were very good uh, multiple times. The rest, I didn't get bored so much as I checked how much time had passed and was worried that only 20 minutes had gone by. I was like, well, is that a good thing because a lot happened in 20 minutes? Or is that a bad thing because I don't want to keep watching another 30 minutes longer? You know, I'm not really <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, the, the, the big negatives to, for me, and by big, I just mean like the biggest negative, I didn't think it was horrible, was that there were a few things that at best were unclear and at worst don't make any sense are not are not how things work in this world um I, and i'll let's just get into it I'll, I'll start with the main one and and i did the same thing you did muhammad where that news report, I went back because I was like, whoa, wait, whoa, whoa, there's some, there's a lot happening here. And I think this is important. Let me go back. And, yeah. and I had to rewind it at least once and take notes on it. But the big one was somebody gets shot. An ambulance comes. Mm -hmm. No police involvement. No sheriff, no detective, no FBI. I don't know if FBI go to nothing like an ambulance comes, takes somebody, and some the bad guys clean up the scene. Like it was, it was at at best. I'm saying it's confusing and unclear. At worst, it doesn't work. It's not real. It doesn't. It you know there there is no oh yeah but crime boss no that that's police come if there are people if, if the ambulance comes because somebody's been shot the police are also coming. Period, right? As far as I know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I would I'm hope wrong. that'd be horrible if not. You know, and there was zero there? police like, eh. presence 24 hours later. Like yeah. nothing. There was nothing that happened. Anyway, that was the biggest problem for me. I want to say something on that because it it seemed to me that when he walked in after the woman was killed, 
when when he walked in, you know, he's looking and all this kind of stuff. And then you start hearing the sirens. Now, if that were me and I start start the hearing the sound siren, of sirens. Thank you. And I would have like I I do like that cartoon and get out of there, man. I would, but he's just like, yeah, okay, up oh, sirens, okay, grab a purse, look through it real quick. All right, all right, I'm out of here. Then he's, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. He's just kind of like nonchalantly getting to the car. I mean, he was doing a decent pace, but you know, it just seemed like. And then in my mind, I was like. Maybe he's going the opposite direction, but it seems like he's going to run right into where yeah. the cop cars come. And it just, it just to me that just that whole scene just seemed, or that whole yeah. part just seemed very nonchalant. Where it's just like, I would have hauled ass to get out of there. And the and sketch I, drawing was a picture of him. I was oh like, my gosh, that was crazy. Who has that kind <laughs> yeah. of memory? Yeah. And yeah. late yeah. at night, I see these are the kind yeah. of yeah. things that that I'm saying. Yeah unclear at best because it's possible in yeah. future episodes things will be explained like maybe the sketch artist is in on it mm. for example to frame him you know so we don't know for sure i try to reserve mm -hmm. full judgment maybe it was just unclear in which case it's okay mm. but there are a few things if yeah. they don't explain it it makes no sense but again about, at night oh. at night you know it was like that whole at night thing it's like that's like a perfect drawing it's like boy you got you got our. That's like a Flintstones picture right there. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Mohammed. No, no, it's okay. I was going to say the other one that just got me along those lines was Patsy finding him in the hospital based on a news story. Like, what? Like, you know, if there's a news story, they're, they're probably not going to say, oh, he's in blah, blah, blah hospital on this boulevard, you know, wing C. <laughs> Anybody just yeah. show up? <laughs> the odds that she would have seen it and been able to get all the way up there and be standing there in the room with him just seemed really like astronomically unlikely. But that was interesting. Mm -hmm. did, did we both notice the uh, the Marvel star in the? Oh yeah, did you know I where didn't. he was from? Yeah, Hot Coulson. Coulson. Agent Coulson. Coulson. Agent oh, Coulson. yeah. Oh, that. Oh, the, you mean the actual Marvel actor? Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw him, and it was it was called Coulson, Florida. Really? No, 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 no. no, no. Where he was from on his ID? On his ID, he was from Durham, North Carolina. <laughs> oh, oh, that's cool. I was like, hey, he's here. <laughs> I can go find him. <laughs> you know, he's in Wing C. Yeah, right. Yeah, but, <laughs> but that actor, clearly he's going to have a larger role as the series goes yeah. on. There's no way yeah. he's going to be in one tiny scene with no yeah. lines and another tiny scene with one line. Yeah. And then he's going to cut out. He's too good yeah. for that. Um, yeah. Speaking of lines, can I give you guys a few sure. that I thought were good? And by the way, uh, I did think it was funny. Um, oh, okay. Not, I mean, I didn't, you know, I didn't soil myself but there were a few moments that i thought were very funny and i could tell you could tell they're trying to be funny in the in basically you know the, the second scene when the guy's showing up and and kind of roughing up the guy at home depot and talking about a shovel and then the guy runs and breaks his leg and it, and it has a comedic response to it you know that's where i was yeah you're not angry um, at me you're angry at yourself yeah <laughs> that's what he said <laughs> yeah so no, i like the line after that where, where somebody said i've never broken a leg Technically, that was one time I did laugh. Like, oh, that was like was a fun. wink to us. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. guys <laughs> get it. Right. Uh, Welcome to okay. The show. So, okay. I thought it was funny when the girlfriend says to Moss, You said you wouldn't work late on my birthday, that it's called work, right? That's right. funny. Okay. Not enormously clever, but funny. Um, now, what I thought was really good was, when uh what's whatever the main guy's name is florida guy mike. mike when he's trying to pick up the blonde deli and he says you know you uh you owe me a favor or something like that she's like no i don't or something he's like, he says how about i owe you a favor and i th that was good i don't know really know why but it was just a nice way to just say okay well then just let's let's get past how we do it just i'll owe yeah. you a favor whatever um, that was, then, that was kind of smooth. then it was a little throwaway line when he walks up to her and she said, you said this wasn't going to happen again. Right. Mm -hmm. And that tells us everything we need to know. That's like that little line of dialogue that gives us all the exposition we need to know. This is not a first time thing. 
They have a close relationship. There's been a discussion. I mean, it, it just opens everything up. Just that one line. Um, when he says to Moss, he says, <laughs> you know, $50,000. And Moss says, you know, I can make you look for nothing because he works for him. He says, you can make me look for nothing. You can make me find her for 50K. Also very good. Um, uh, whoa, whoa, there, yeah. But, oh, when he says, somebody says, maybe it was his sister. No, some dude says, but hey, that's good news about your dick. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember who said it when he didn't get his dick. That was funny. I mean, there were a lot of really good lines in here. Uh, when he, okay, he sees the first guy has an apostrophe that shouldn't. And then the next place doesn't have an apostrophe that should. He says, no one cares about punctuation anymore. That was are, yeah, I, I was like, I thought of you, Muhammad. I was like, Muhammad's all over that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and when he says, what are you shooting at, Buzz? He says, I don't know, a manatee, maybe. That that was funny to me. Well, there's no a man no manatee there. Um, that's a mermaid. <laughs> and, and then another great line when they're looking at the space station, he and his niece, I suppose, she says, you know, the space station, she says they're in constant free fall. And he says, I know the feeling. Like that's very good. That's like a downward spiral of the uh, gambler gambling addicts. And then when she leaves, she says, "I'm going to go watch The Bachelor." He says, "Don't do drugs." Cool. Um, and lastly, when the dad is talking to him, and he says, "You don't have a compass, and Florida doesn't have track." Also very good. Uh, so there are a lot of those, you know. Seven or eight lines I thought that were really A plus lines. Oh, you didn't read one of the ones I had. We'll go to Disney World after Daddy gets his gun. Yeah, that one was a little. Uh, that one was, that was less subtle. Line. It was it was a blunt force object. <laughs> it was a force. I don't know which I scoffed at was. It's a lot harder for attractive people to get ahead than you might think. I'm like, I scoffed at that one. I didn't laugh. Yeah, that was a funny one. That's true. Because she's wrong. What do you think, Rico? Were there some uh, lines or moments that got you uppity? Oh, as far as lines, I didn't really register anything that, that you know, tickled my fancy. Um, I do agree with you, though, on the, on, the, on the line where, you know, I just forgot it that quickly, uh, the line where she's walking and he's, he's driving. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was the line? Uh, He's like, uh, you owe me a favor. And she's like, what favor is that? He says, all right, I owe you a favor. Yeah. Well, no, it was another one. But, oh, how about, how about I owe you a favor? Wasn't it? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. I, I like that. I, I thought that was actually kind of a, a very smooth line because if I remember correctly, she was kind of like, oh, you know, it was so, uh, that was, was kind of kind of hot and smooth there. Speaking of hot and smooth, Muhammad. Who is your favorite character? Ooh. I mean, the one I'd want to hang out with might be like uh, Patsy, the sister, <laughs> just in terms of like, <laughs> she seemed, seemed friendly and stuff like that. In terms of interesting, I'm very curious to know more about Delhi. Like, what is her story? Like, what? I mean, we didn't, we had these little glimpses, but all very much from Mike's perspective, as opposed to like what actually she's after more, more on her own. Mm-hmm. What about you, Rico? Do you have a favorite character? I don't know if I'd say he's my favorite, but I was actually very interested in more of the dad's story. His dad. Former cop. Stuff, yeah. Was that a Baldwin? Was he one of the Baldwin hmm. brothers? I don't know. Like Daniel Baldwin? I don't know, but he looks super familiar. But yeah, I. he's... I don't know. There's something about him that that I was like, all right, there's there's a story here in relation to um everything else that's going on. And it was it was just interesting. It, it was he had he had cool stuff that that I liked in terms of the the scenes and stuff like that. So it really made me uh, curious as to what more of that person's story is, because you don't really see a lot of him. Um and when you do, it's you know, we're 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 already seeing this relationship between he and the son that is not the greatest, but 
you know, there's definitely, oh, there's a story there. So it was very, mm -hmm. knowing a little bit more about it. I think I agree with you, Rico. I think the dad may have been my favorite. There was, he just had a lot of depth, but every character had good depth. Nobody was just like one dimensional, you know, even, even uh, Moss, <clears throat> it would have been so easy to just make him the big boss man. Yeah. But instead they made him like, kind of like the bumbling idiot, spoiled brat, just kind of fell into it. But, yeah. but also those can be the most dangerous because they're unpredictable. They're yep. moody. You know, he's, he's used to stomping his feet. Yeah. Insecurity, you know, so that's actually a really good character. Uh, and uh, honorable mention to Caitlin Fox. Uh, that was the reporter, I guess. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if the character was written that beautifully because we didn't see much of it, but I thought the actress did a really good job of performing it, especially the one line she said something like, when he says, oh, I don't, I don't know, do you like national stories? Obviously baiting her. And she's like, oh, no, no, I do. We do. Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, very a very good comedic delivery. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I immediately was was pleased with her. And I will say, Rico, we're tied. Muhammad's going to have to be the tiebreaker because I absolutely predicted that very that the very end twist. I didn't predict it right away. I predicted it maybe like 15 minutes before the show ended. I was like, I'll just bet you. Uh, and so that that was the, that very end twist. I definitely got that. But what do you think, Muhammad? It's one to one. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't really predict it. I mean, I, when he was there with what we thought was the body, I thought it was interesting. That he wasn't examining her a little bit more closely to see what the story was. I definitely did. But then once that. he once he left, yeah. I was like, I guess she's dead. You know. <laughs> yeah. I was definitely hey. surprised, like Rico, in that when when the, the firings first happened, when she first got shot. That I was like, oh, that's confusing. <laughs> yeah. Netflix got me. I died. I, I thought she was gone. I was she like, what, did she know he was outside? Like, like who was she acting for? Right. She had the gun. I just yeah. felt like her character was too good. And the actress portraying the character was too good. And she was too pivotal to the character that I, I was just like, I really don't understand how they could get rid of that character unless she's constantly brought back in every episode in flashbacks. That's what that's I was what saying. I mm -hmm. So that's, that's I how I kind of tried to justify it. But then I started going, oh, wait, unless, you know. Not actually dead, yeah. One of the first things I too. thought was, no, no, she was. My first thought was, oh, they're trying to Game of Thrones people. It's like, you know what? <laughs> right when you give a damn about them, ah, damn, they're gone. Yeah. Oh, yeah they're coming back now, they're not, now they're gone. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the game of people. I, love that. I also found it a little peculiar that florida man himself mike was uh was cuban i would say that's just a guess um but certainly hispanic and his dad was very not hispanic but i guess his mother must be right but he seemed to still have a slight hispanic accent which is always confusing to me and i'm always such a stickler and, and too fussy about that i'm like I, I would assume that he would not have an accent if he's just born and raised here and has at least one. For example, my mother is French. She is, has a very thick French accent. She only came to America, you know, in, in adulthood. Um, however, I was born in America. I don't have a French accent when I speak, you know. So that's just always like, I always get like fussy a, about that. Maybe you grew up in a like heavily Cuban community, so everybody no, had that accent. It could accent be anything like that. You're right, yeah. yeah. Well, also, you were raised around your, you know, your mom raised you and she has that accent. And a lot of times that, you know, an accent will pass over to, you know, the the offspring, depending on. Just act, ask Jack Crusher. See? Of Star Trek Picard. That That's the one that really got me. I was like, no, no. But they covered it. You can't have a British accent if you know. They grew that's up with Beverly. Thing. It, yeah. accents aren't hereditary you got well actually hang on a second they we happen to have it, an though. evolutionary biologist here. <laughs> muhammad are accents hereditary no <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> but they covered that though they didn't he go to school in london or something yeah but that that's yeah they that. even covered it with picard in in, in season two because they were like you know yeah our our family fled france and went to england and because of course, you know, for thirty-some years, 
you know, it was it, it was always an off and on thing of, wait a minute, he's French, but he has a British accent. Yeah, whatever. We love him anyway. And I but. think it's a better I think it's better to do the ah whatever than it is to try to cram in a reason and we go, that oh, doesn't so I guess it's probably better to do it the way Florida man did it, where they're just like, look, there's a million different ways you can figure out in your head that he has yeah. a slight accent. Just go with that. So that's probably the better way. I And you're I, right also. Right. And you're right also, maybe the mom. You know, whoever the mom is or was, you know, maybe he was just raised by his mom and his dad was barely around or she, they were in a heavily uh, Hispanic neighborhood. Or maybe they lived in, my for example, Cuba for the it's first true. five years of his life. And they, maybe she and the dad met there. I don't know. Could be anything. So, or like in Picard, maybe he went to Cuba for school all his life and he came back and he had. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I should have brought that nitpick up. It's such a minor, <laughs> such a minor nitpick. <laughs> I know. 10 minutes of what? <laughs> I know. But it's always interesting because it kind of gets your mind kind of like yeah. theorizing, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, well, Rico, what was the worst moment in this show for you? Worst moment. Ooh. The worst moment. Probably the part that I mentioned earlier where he discovers her body and he it it was almost like an unrealistic exit of him in him getting out of there as a result of hearing the sirens. I was like, this doesn't no. This doesn't work. Interesting. That one didn't bother me as much. I mean, for me, it was uh, some of the flashbacks I just got kind of bored with. Like, okay, yes, we get they had a relationship. We get they were close. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it, it just felt long to me when, when we'd go through some of those. Or when he just was sitting there and just seeming like longing and missing. You're like, okay, whatever. I don't care. Move on. <laughs> Plot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what was really interesting was how the episode started almost in complete contrast with how pilots usually start. Usually the formula is something crazy happens and then they go one year ago yeah one year and you go back a year and then they fill in why this you know like this guy you know yeah. you see breaking bad you see these pants flying in this in, yeah. in an rv and you're like what the heck and it's like two weeks prior and then you know they got you this did the opposite where they gave you an interesting little tidbit at the beginning and then they go one year later i'm like what why, yeah, I, I actually why did guess they were going. I thought they were going to go back and fill in the middle, but then exactly like, me too. Going, like, me yeah. too. And it wasn't until later that I figured because otherwise I'm like that doesn't even work. That doesn't make sense. It's irrelevant. We don't need to know any of that. One line tells us that he's a gambling addict, but that kind of set us up to where we see that they're just going to be periodic flashbacks to a year or so prior, and you know the the time that led up to it. Uh, I guess. Rico hated it though. <laughs> Is that the piece you liked the least? Right. Um, I think what I liked least was what I was saying earlier that did not make any sense at all. And all I can hope is that in subsequent episodes they explain <clears throat> that. Because it's entirely possible that they just say, you know, this is a crooked town, they don't investigate murders, yeah. or there, or why didn't you investigate murders? Well, we don't talk about that, or, or anything like that to where it's not just a writing slip up. It's mm -hmm. it's part of the story. Mm -hmm. Then okay, that that's fine. <clears throat> but as it stands right now, like I said, it's either unclear or bad. But what do we know? Not much. However, we'd like to know more about you, Rico E. Anderson, comma actor. Well, what would you like to know, Ryan T. Husk? I would like to know, and our fans here would love to know, what the heck is going on in your world? What's new? Any big auditions that you can't talk about just between us? Uh, any cool uh, acting gigs you've done recently? There is a really cool audition that I, that I did that I cannot mention, but I will definitely tell you off uh, screen because it was... <sighs> 
I don't think I got it because I probably would have heard something by now, but mm-hmm. damn. All I'll say is it was a voiceover audition and holy guacamole. Um, but I beyond that, that is. yeah, you have no clue. So besides that, um, yeah, you know, since since the last uh since the last what the first, um, I had mentioned that my F episode of FBI International uh, had aired, the one that I flew to Budapest to shoot. It uh, aired on uh, on CBS, and it's currently streaming on Paramount Plus. It's mm-hmm. Episode two, or I'm sorry, episode nine, season two of FBI International, titled uh, Wheelman, and that's that's a that's a incredible ride, and and you know, true crime suspense. Wait a minute, for Wheelman? That's pretty cool. For Wheelman, yeah, it, it was it was a great episode. You being funny, he's being funny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow! Do you want to know the name of the episode? Yeah, Wheelman. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, um, <laughs> That's easy to but, remember. <laughs> um, truth be told, the show that I've been on for three seasons uh, completed its third season run. So. All three seasons are now available to view on Apple TV Plus. So go check it out. Also, um, as of this taping, I just uh, shot an episode of a new comedy. Um, and it is a comedy, a new comedy on CBS that stars John Cryer and uh, Donald Faison. Uh, John Cryer being from Two and a Half Men, Donald Faison from Scrubs. Yeah, and cool. I. Yeah, it's 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 and it's created by Michael Malley, uh, comedian Michael Malley, who I believe was very big in the '90s. Yeah, wait a minute, wasn't he in a sitcom? What was his sitcom? Yeah, was it Yes, Dear or mm. something? And I think it was with his son. Like he, his son was in it oh. too. Okay. Anyway, please Seems continue. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So so he created the series and um, John Cryer and Donald Faison. It's it's now it's currently called the the untitled Michael Malley project but the working title is also called we thought we were done and it's in a long long story short it deals with a divorcee who uh whose girlfriend a divorcee of 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 uh, two kids whose divorced wife marries um someone from the Boston Celtics. This is actually based on a true story, Um, but it's a comedy when you have those two together. And it's really good. And I'm not just saying that because I'm on the fifth episode, but- Very good. Yeah, it's funny. It's funny. It's, it's It's got those old classic comedy 90s elements to it that just, it, it just hits you, hits you, hits you. Um, John Cryer being John Cryer and his comedic genius really adds that that fun to the show. And um, it, it's just great being in the sitcom world, even if it was just for the few days that I did it. If anybody's ever been, who's not an actor, has ever been to a taping of a sitcom, it's, there's so, mm. it's so much fun seeing the process of it coming together. And it's very much like theater where you rehearse all week and then on, on the Friday, that's when the audience comes in and you perform in front of them. and it's, it's just so much fun. It's, it's, it's a wheelhouse that I would happily be a part of every, on a weekly basis. Cause it's a wheel man. It, exactly. That's the name uh, of the FBI international episode, by the way. Real quick you. too. Uh, you're right. It was yes, dear, uh, that he's in. He's also in the good place and a ton of oh. other, uh, really cool shows. Very, uh, successful dude there. Good stuff, Rico. Yeah, yeah. So I'm excited for that to come out. I'm not sure when it is, probably about in a month or two. Uh, but check your local listings. Uh, if you have a watch list on your interwebs for all things John Cryer and not all things Donald Faison, then uh, definitely check it out. I'm in the fifth episode. And uh, yeah, some voiceover projects as well. I just want to say, I, I so I do audio description now as well for different TV shows. And uh, audio description is for people who are blind or visually impaired. So if you're clicking on a show and you go to your settings, you can go to uh, English audio uh, AD or audio description. And uh, I will be there. And I'm doing audio description for the show The Peripheral, which is on Amazon, the show Swarm, which is on Amazon, and East New York, which is on CBS and streams on Paramount Plus as well. Wow, you're busy. 
I'm Red Bulls can be tough. There's so much happening in that show all the time that's that's hard to describe too. The peripheral? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, techno babble is real. <laughs> yeah. And, no, I know. I just see the show. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a lot it's, going on theoretically, but it's not directly in front of you, right? What do you mean? Uh, <laughs> peripheral. No. Uh, I see what you did there. God, me not getting it today is just. I don't know. It's not worth getting. Don't worry about it. But okay, good. Look, <laughs> everybody, uh, we hope you took down notes on all that stuff because there's a lot. Go check it out. Oh, one last question about uh, uh, what's the one that just finished its third season on Apple? Uh, truth, truth be, be told, told, is do we know if there's a fourth season yet? Has been picked up. Uh, we are, time. we're not sure yet. We're waiting to find out. And uh, yeah, fingers, toes, and eyes. Everybody, crossed. go <laughs> click on that. Watch it. Click on it a million times because that's what drives these kinds of things. Clicks. Yes, it's very true. And uh, go on IMDb, rate it, please, and. Uh, you know, write your congressman and no, don't do that. Uh, yeah, just, just uh, you know, it, it's we we did very well this season. We we were the number one show for three weeks in a row. And wow. Um, yeah, we we succeeded a lot of, you know, top shows, you know, due to our third season premiere and just, you know, just the hype that that went into this new season. Gabrielle Union is like the the guest star for this season, the big guest star for the season. And, um, so yeah, we we should know very soon if if a fourth season is happening. So we're very hoping. cool, very cool. Everybody, go check that out. And uh, oh, what's your uh, what's your Twitter handle, by the way, Rico E Anderson? The Twitter handle is I am Rico Anderson. I am Rico Anderson. That's Twitter as well as Instagram and Facebook. Just punch up Rico Anderson. Yeah, without the I am. Yeah, All right, right, everybody, cool. it is time. Muhammad knows. For the terrible two line on the bottom, bottom line. <laughs> All right, it's the final two questions of the show. The two most important questions, besides the ones we asked of Rico, and question number one goes a little something like this: Doctor Muhammad Noor, you have watched Florida Man episode one in its entirety, and it was uh, entitled. I forgot to say the title. The realest goddamn place on the earth. No, that time. Well, on a scale of one to ten, what would you give this first episode? It's funny. I was looking at my notes to see what I wrote, and I was like, "Low BS." What is that? But I think it said "low sixes" is what it meant. But it looks like low BS. <laughs> you know what that means, Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> so what was that? Bad? But yeah, I think I'll go with that. I'll say uh, just to put a number on it. I'll say six point three. You know. <laughs> Low sixes in general, but yeah, I, you know, I, I like the I like the exposition. I like the twist at the ending. I didn't love all the execution. The characters were 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 pretty interesting. So, yeah, I mean, low sixes. It, it didn't it didn't captivate me, but I didn't hate it. I, didn't, I certainly didn't regret watching it. What about you, Rico, you can be pretty tough sometimes, but you can also be pretty not tough sometimes. Happy. Uh, what's today? <laughs> Some people call me a pussycat. I'm a gangster of love. <laughs> Some, call Some me people call him Maurice. Cowboy. Yeah. All right. So um, I, I, I'll tell you, I, I was prepared to honestly give it like a five, a solid five. And then that ending hit me. <laughs> and they got me. They got me. What can I say? They got me. Based on that alone, I upped it to, I upped it to basically like, I'll say a 6.5. Very close. And that's being kind of generous, but they got me. And, you know, it, that, that's always impressive when they, they can pull something like that with me. So, <laughs> but in general. I Rico E. Anderson, you. private eye. Dun, dun, dun. All right. Uh, well, for me, I am giving it, everybody remembers Mark Eaton. He used to play on the Utah Jazz, his height. That's what I would give it. Everybody knows he was 7'4". Wow. 7'4", yeah, tall guy. Whoa. Um, big hands, too. Big beard. So anyway, yeah, I'd give it a 7.4 uh, because... Most of it was good, and some of it was very good. 
And the parts that I thought were maybe not good might not be as bad in subsequent episodes. We'll have to kind of see. So, But as a standalone thing, overall, 7.4 from me. And, uh, you know, it was a, a relatively fun and easy watch. It was a little... I don't want to call it boring like you guys did, but it was a little bit, you know, where you kind of start, you know, getting in your own head about things, thinking about your own things, you know, for a minute or two there. But that's what I'd give it a 7.4. Muhammad, question number two is the big one. For the purposes of this podcast, we all had to watch the first episode of Florida Man entitled The Realest Goddamn Place on the Earth, but not on Pluto. But that's an inside joke with me and Pretty Muhammad. TV. <laughs> mm-hmm. But now that the podcast is over and we're free to move about the internet, would you, of your own volition, hop back on Netflix and watch that second episode? Before the twist at the end, it was an absolutely no. <laughs> you know, I mean, I was just saying absolutely. It was just a no. You know, it was a, a solid no. With the twist at the ending, super barely yes. <laughs> but like barely yes <laughs> it's one of those things where like i have to be like really out of stuff and then oh, okay i guess i'll watch it <laughs> i might give it another shot to see it and if i'm if i'm not more captivated for the second than for the first time i might stop after that but at least I, i'm curious now like to know a little bit more like what's the story here what's what's actually going on and maybe it'll captivate me i mean some shows do everybody deserves a second chance muhammad says not about uh, everybody. Not, not the, what was that one? Silver Hawks. Silver Hawks. <laughs> you watched all of season one. I checked your history. Absolutely he not. T shirts. He goes to the conventions. He's like, <laughs> you know, the two or like, you know. he wears a hawk on his head at the convention. <laughs> yeah. uh, he goes, I like that one character. <laughs> Rico, what uh, about you? Would you, of your own volition, watch the second episode? I'm Team Muhammad on this. Before that ending, hell no. But oh boy, they got me, and damn it, I needed to, I I needed to find out. I need to know how how I thought she was as dead as the dodo bird. I was like, <laughs> ow, and why am I freezing? There I am, and and I I needed to know. They got me. Netflix got me. So based on that alone, yes, I would. Rico, it looked like you were reaching for things that weren't there for a second. Well, <laughs> they were. <laughs> I'm sneaking to be free. If you, know what, if you know what I'm saying right now, Rico, I think you walk, do. Walk, walk. Uh, Rico sent me something very funny about somebody reaching for things that aren't there earlier today. Yeah. That's what I'm yeah. referencing. Um, i to share that again. The point is... I'm actually a no for watching the second episode. Um, oh my gosh, the high but, score is a no. <laughs> I mean, it, it, the you know, do you know the the mystery? Yes, you know, does you know captivate you and and titillate you? But you know, I kind of have a feeling. I know, you know, we know what's going to happen. Now they're going to be on the run. They're going to squabble. They're going to be in <clears> love. He's, you know, also still partially in love with the lady back in Philadelphia, who, by the way, is played beautifully by the actress. Uh, we didn't mention her as well. His yeah. ex-wife, is, I believe it yeah, is. Exactly. Ex-wife. Um, and there's a lot more, you know, so it, it's. It, it's it's got all the bones of a good show, but it's not really my type of show. I'm not really, you know, into that kind of stuff, usually, unless it's done really well, like, say, Breaking Bad or Ozark. Those are done very well. This is that same type of show. Uh, same thing with, with, yes, we Tulsa, this King. With Tulsa King. Yeah. Yes. Did you watch that, the second of Tulsa King? No. Oh, okay. I actually said no, but I did watch the second. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. wow. Everybody <laughs> checked their list. bingo cards for that one. Yeah, I think I said no at least. <laughs> Was it good? Yeah, it actually got better. Yeah, okay. Very cool. Very cool. <clears throat> Anyway, that's about it, everybody. If you'd like us to review a brand new show in the comments below, make a suggestion uh, to a brand new show and maybe we'll watch it. Also tell us where we can find it, like Netflix, Disney Plus, our mailbox. If it, we have to get a DVD or something, that would be terrible. Um, or YouTube. Red YouTube box. is an old standby. Pluto Red TV. Red box. Blockbuster. Red box. <laughs> 
Uh, that's about it. Please, everybody, uh, like this video, comment in the comments section below. Make sure you are subscribed and give us a five-star rating, all that stuff. And go check out Rico E. Anderson's social media. That's about it. Um, what I'm trying to say is this podcast was fun. Thanks, guys. <laughs> This podcast highlighted strengths and weaknesses. This podcast had me hanging with the homies. And I always love that. I like where that one was going. Uh, so everybody remember what Mr. Michael Kenyon Rosenberg always likes to say. Yeah, don't forget to be an organ donor and don't forget to watch the first of things, especially with us. All right. Now freeze frame like you're the main l lady. Uh. Smile and pretend that